Hello everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren and I make videos a couple of times a week about books and fandomy things. So if you want to stick around and join us, then feel free to hit that subscribe button. Today I'm going to be doing the A to Z of Queer Lit, as you can see by the title of this video. This video was originally done by George Lester and I will link his original video down below. It was a fair few years ago now, but I have seen this done many a time over the years and I thought it was finally time I decided to do it. I have 26 books here obviously because there are 26 books in the letters, not books in the alphabet, letters in the alphabet, I know how to speak. And I have read like 23 of them, the other three are on my Christmas wish list, but I do want to share them anyway because I've heard nothing but good things about them and I am excited to finally pick them up. So for the first one, there were lots of options that I could have picked, but if you guys know me and if you've, and you've been watching for a while, you will know that ultimately I had no choice but to choose Aristotle and Dante, Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin O'Leary Sines. For those that don't know, this is actually my all time favourite book ever. I read this book back in 2014 when I was on holiday and I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did and I was just going to read a couple of chapters before heading to the pool but I ended up staying on the sun lounger until I finished the whole book and I actually got really badly sunburned which I wouldn't recommend because the sun is bad and please protect your skin but this book is incredible it's just I can never properly put into words just how much I love this book. If you've never heard of Ari and Dante before this book follows 15 year old Aristotle Mendoza and he is living in El Paso in Texas in the 1980s. One day during his summer break from school he decides to go swimming but he can't swim and at the swimming pool is where he meets 15 year old Dante Quintana and they strike up a friendship even though they are complete opposites. This book follows that summer, the rest of the year and the following summer and the growth of their friendship and relationship and it's all about family and discovering yourselves and also discovering your family and that your family are people and not just like your parents are people that had lives before you and they're not just your parents and then also discovering yourself and becoming close with your family and where you're from and it's honestly wonderful and I cannot express how amazingly beautiful and wonderful this book is so it had to be number A even though there were many different options I could have chosen. Then B we have the beauty B that remains by Ashley Woodfolk. This book focuses on three different people Autumn, Shay and Logan who were all brought together by music however when all of them experience his death that may be something that will pull them apart. Logan can't stop watching videos of his dead ex-boyfriend. Shay is trying to keep up the music blogging that she did but struggling and Autumn keeps writing messages to her best friend that she knows are not going to be answered. And it's kind of them all dealing with that and kind of how that can bring you back together. I've spoken before about how important books about grief are and how important I think talking about grief is. It's a really tricky thing. I was 11 when I first had my first experience of death and loss and grief and it doesn't really make more sense now I'm an adult. If anything it makes less sense because when you're younger you know you kind of immediately get told about like heaven and hell and not that I'm you know people have different religions and different beliefs and that's fine but the older you get you're exposed to different things and it makes you kind of question things and for me now it's even more confusing than it was when I was 11 but it didn't make any sense and it kind of came out of nowhere and I really remember that and really remember dealing with that and as someone that has always read books and always related to characters I'd have loved to have had characters then all I really had was Harry Potter and how he dealt with grief and people that he lost whereas I hadn't ever really experienced it before. I've now read so many wonderful books that I think deal with loss really 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 well and it seems like a really morbid topic to make a video about but I've always kind of been tempted to just to kind of share that because I think they can be really helpful to people um, and this book I think is really really good and another one that does that really really well. Then we have Autobiography by Christina Lauren that's the C. I adore this book. This book focuses on Tanner and his family have moved from California to Utah which kind of pushes him back into the closet and he's not out in Utah. It's now his senior year final semester and he's just excited to finally get out of Utah again and move somewhere else and start to be himself again. Then for the final semester his best friend Autumn gets him to take part in this writing seminar where they have to spend the semester and write a book and there he meets Sebastian Brother who is this Mormon prodigy. His family are very very Mormon. Sebastian actually won the seminar 
like not won the seminar. Sebastian actually his book from the seminar was is being published and he now mentors the people in the seminar and him and Tanner kind of strike up a friendship and relationship and the thing that I really really love about this book is I think that it deals with religion really really well and it's not this kind of painting religion as this evil thing of no acceptance whatsoever and yes there are some cases in which people from particular religions can be like that but this is a really really good exploration of those feelings but also ultimately coming to conclusions yourself and thinking that you know it if God's my, like the God that you believe in has created me this way so if he'd created me that way why would he not like me and I think that that's really really important and this is just a fantastic ex exploration of sexuality and religion we have as I descended D by Robin Talley. I've spoken before about how Robin Talley is one of my all-time favourite authors. There is another book of hers in this pile as well because I genuinely love her books so much. They are all LGBTQ plus books and I would 100% recommend checking them out. This book focuses on Maria and Lily who are their school's ultimate power couple. They really want Maria to win the Kingsley Prize and that's kind of the future that they've got but the thing or person I should say that stands in their way is Delilah who is the kind of the like preemptive winner of the Kingsley Prize but what she doesn't know, what Delilah doesn't know is that Lily and Maria are m like more than dedicated to doing whatever it takes to make sure Maria wins this prize. It's, it's actually a little bit like thrillery in that sense like it's kind of like there's a line and they're like gonna cross it kind of thing. But this is one that I also really really like and I also really like when they're not just contemporaries where you have queer books that kind of explore lots of other routes rather than it just being like they are just like it's it's modern day one of them's out one of them's not they're dealing with you know like it's I love seeing kind of different explorations with like stories that you would just tell anyway but just with queer characters I think that's really really good people tend to sort of put queer characters into one specific genre and one specific storyline when actually that's not the case whatsoever then for E we have Everything Leads to You by Nina Lacour and this book focuses on Emmy who has been kind of given the task to look after her brother's Los Angeles apartment for the summer after after graduation sort of a gift like she gets to stay there and Emmy has just broken up with her on, on again off again girlfriend and for her job she kind of works on set design and finding sets for photo shoots and films and different things and when they are looking through this guy's apartment to kind of look for stuff that they could maybe use they find a letter which has some money that they want like this guy has just died and this money be, would be going to his family members so they kind of go on a hunt to find those family members and it's everything that involves from there I really really like this book it's not too long at all I ended up reading this one in one sitting and I thought that it was really really good and I really enjoyed it Nina Lacour is another one whose stories I really 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 love so I wanted to share that one as well then for F we have Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Colhurst this book focuses on Princess Danelia who has been betrothed to the Prince of Maneria for as long as she can remember. Her marriage to the Prince is going to be what kind of builds this alliance and strengthens this alliance between her town and Maneria. However, she is kind of keeping a secret and that that's, she has affinity for fire and she's marrying into a family in which that kingdom, magic is not allowed. She's kind of settling into her new home but trying to hide her magic and also trying to impress the prince's family, particularly his sister. However, when something goes wrong and something happens to the prince, Denna and Mare kind of have to team together to help figure out what's going on and it's that story unfolded from there and I think you can kind of figure out what's going to happen between between Dana and Mare so there we go. This book's really really cool again I'm in love with fantasy books that explore like that have just queer characters in fantasy books and um, have that and this is kind of that typical story that you'd see with a, a man and a woman couple but this is different and I really really like that and I like that this kind of there's more, less contemporary books coming out now and more kind of queer fantasy books and queer kind of thriller books and crime books and sci-fi books and that's what we love. Cool. Then for J, G, G, not J, G, I had to go for The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. This book is amazing. I am obsessed with this whole series, the Montague Sibling series. As this, there's a sequel called The Lady's Guide to Piracy and Petticoats. There's going to be book 1.5 coming out in December in the UK called The Gentleman's Guide to Getting Lucky. And then next year, there's going to be the third one about the goblin, which won't make much sense if you don't know what this book is. But 
it's so exciting and I can't wait. This book focuses on Henry Montague or Monty and it's set in the 1700s. His father is a lord and Monty is expected to show proper behaviour and take over the estate once he comes of age. However, Monty doesn't want to do that and showing proper behaviour is not what Monty wants to do. Monty is bisexual, he's in love with his best friend Percy, his dad does not um, approve is the word I'm looking for of this behavior so monty is set to go on his gentleman's tour of europe with his best friend percy but his dad kind of arranges that to be a chaperone and also his little sister felicity is coming along and lots of things tend to go wrong on the trip as well as them trying to enjoy themselves he's also trying to kind of get percy's attention and then there's pirates and all the stuff and this book's amazing monty is like no, like voice like the way that he is written is absolutely incredible and I would really really actually recommend listening to the audiobook of this it's read by Christopher Coulson who played Tom Riddle in Chamber of Secrets and he has the perfect Monty voice like that's how Monty's voice sounds in my head and it's absolutely wonderful and one of my favorite audiobooks so I wanted to recommend this one as well I love this book series so much like I can't recommend it enough then for H we have History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera this book focuses on Griffin who has lost his first love in a drowning accident. Theo who is the one that has died with his best friend is his ex-boyfriend and the one that Griffin was so sure that he was going to end up with. So now he's kind of dealing with grief. Again it's another really really good exploration of grief and his OCD is becoming a lot worse. He then meets Theo's current boyfriend, the boyfriend he had when he died and they kind of lean on each other to help themselves through what has happened because they have sort of similar experiences but it's also very different and it's kind of Griffin coming to terms with kind of letting go of that past and kind of accepting that past and not wanting to miss out on what could come next and I think that this again is an amazing story I love Adam Silvera's books and his work but again it's a really 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 interesting exploration of grief and I would definitely recommend it and for I we have It's Not Like It's a Secret by Nisa Sugaria and this book focuses on Sana she's currently dealing with lots of things her sexuality the fact that she's pretty sure her dad is having an affair the kind of way her parents are very traditional and she doesn't think that they'll accept her sexuality so when her and her family move to California she is still kind of dealing with that and then she meets Jamie Mer Ramirez a girl in her new school and they kind of start up a relationship like friendship relationship it's kind of at the beginning stages it's kind of don't really put like a label on it and it's kind of everything that comes from there. I really liked this book. There were a couple of bits at the end which I didn't particularly like and if you read it you'll know what I mean like Sana calls out behaviour that she then acts on but it's not massively and I did really like a lot of the themes in the book for example they talk about how just because you are also a minority does not mean that you can then like you can still be offensive and racist to other minorities like it doesn't like if you're being offensive or you're being kind of judgmental to a minority if you are also a minority it, like if they're different like you, you still can be being offensive so I thought that was a really good exploration and it did kind of really focus on like family and exploring different family dynamics which I think was really really good being aware that someone else is going to live a different life from you and they're not always going to be aware like they're not going to have the same experiences or the same opportunities and kind of being aware of that and sort of realizing that everyone is different which I think is a really good thing to have taken away from this. Overall I did enjoy it and I did think there were some really really important issues tackled in this book. Then for Jay we are going with The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book focuses on Evelyn Hugo who back in the day was a Hollywood starlet, really really famous and now she is kind of a recluse, lives, lives sort of by herself and doesn't do any interviews or any more press. However she now decides that she is ready to tell the story of her life and give an interview and she chooses kind of very unknown magazine reporter Monique Grant who is kind of confused as to why she's been chosen but she goes to meet with Evelyn anyway and Evelyn then proceeds to tell the story of her life and why she was married seven times, the truth behind that and her life and this book is amazing i read this book so quickly i couldn't put it down people were telling me to read it for ages and no one ever spoke about the fact that it was an lgbtq plus book no one spoke about that fact so i am shouting it here loud and clear that this book 
it's queer. Evelyn is actually bisexual and spends a majority of this book in a relationship with a woman and it's like it's so painful and wonderful and it's such an amazing story and the way that the story is told and the different dynamics of story writing of when we go back to the past and it's in Evelyn's point of view but then we flip back to the present and it's like she's telling the story and I absolutely fell in love with this book and I feel like more people need to be talking about it correctly rather than just ignoring a massive part of Evelyn's Hugo. Evelyn's no no, in a massive part of Evelyn's of Evelyn Hugo and her personality there's actually a quote in this which says don't ignore half of me because so you can fit me into a box um, I think that's really important and also it's also really important to show that to say and I want to just state this for the record that sexuality is not a spoiler so if you tell someone that's about someone's sexuality in a book that's not a spoiler for the book like you can do that like otherwise books just kind of get erased and that representation gets erased if no one talks about it there's a little message there as well as a recommendation of a really good book <laughs> and for k we have let's talk about love by claire Kahn. this book focuses on alice who is asexual and biromantic right away i just want to say how much i loved that because most books don't explore like most stories of asexual characters which i think do there do need to be more of definitely and that representation representation is amazing do very rarely explore the fact that you can still be then you can still fall in love with people of the opposite sex or the same sex like it's not sort of spoke about that you can be bi-romantic people just always sort of assume bisexual and then in which case asexuality does not always fit in with that so i really really liked that and her girlfriend breaks up with her for that reason of her being asexual so kind of the plans that she had for the summer just kind of end up being ruined and she decides she kind of wants to stay well away from love and not to be with it and not go near it anymore she's done but then she meets Takumi and they kind of start to form a friendship she kind of really can't stop thinking about him and these feelings are kind of new and he's sort of a lot more accepting it's kind of everything that comes from that and her dealing with that I really really love this book I bought this book on my kindle at first to give it a go and then I ended up buying a physical copy because I really 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 loved it and I can't recommend it enough I think it deals with some really 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 important things for L we have the last bus to Everland by Sophie Cameron and this book focuses on Brody who is kind of just done with life and bullies and school and everything that's kind of he's dealing with at the moment and then he meets Nico and Nico takes him to Everland which is a place where he can be who he wants to be and a place where he can kind of be himself and be the best version of himself and the self that he wants to be there's no rules in Everland no kind of consequences like it never ends this is a wonderful place but you could lose yourself there forever and this book I really really loved like it took me a long time which is really stupid for how much I'm obsessed with Peter Pan and how much I love the story of Peter Pan and like all the different like legends surrounding it and stuff that this is kind of a version of Neverland in which like you never grow up you never leave I really liked this exploration of the kind of story and the characters but also kind of the world that is like spoken about an experience in this book so I really wanted to share it with you because it's a book I read a lot more recently as well so I don't know how much I've actually spoken about it on my channel yet so this is for Elle. Then for M we have The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M Danforth. This book I've spoken about a little bit more recently because it was a book that I read back in 2015 for the first time and didn't enjoy it at all but then I gave it another chance and I was so happy that I did. This book focuses on Cameron Post who parents die in a car crash but her first thought when she finds out is that she's glad that she'll never have to tell them that when that was happening she was kissing another girl. She then goes to move in with her very conservative aunt who when finds out that Cameron is gay puts like does not agree and sends her to a conversion therapy place to kind of treat her and stop her from sinning and it's kind of the people she meets there their story is dealing with how people see them, dealing with themselves, but then also realising that that's who you are and that can't be changed. I'm so, so glad I decided to give this book another go. It's absolutely amazing. I can't believe conversion therapy is still a thing, let alone was ever a thing. It's crazy. It, it's, it genuinely scares me a little bit that it still exists and is still a thing. This book is a really, really good exploration of lots of really important things. Then for N, we have Not Your Psychic by C.B. Lee. This book focuses on Jess who lives in Andover, which is a place where superheroes are considered it's the norm, you are a superhero. And she is kind of trying to live up to her superhero parents. 
she doesn't have those superpowers despite the fact that her lineage is really 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 heroic so she's just kind of struggling through things and kind of struggling with trying to find internships but then she discovers a really really good paid one but it means working with the town's super villain but it does mean that she will get to work with her secret crush abby but then she also kind of forms a crush on the secret m who she meets on the internship who she never really sees and kind of it starts off as a way to kind of get back at her real superhero parents and kind of go against what they they do but then she kind of uncovers a lot more than she was expecting i really really love this book again i read it on my kindle i was finally able to get a physical copy when i visited gate of the word the other day i will link my call to that down below if you haven't seen it by the way um so i'm excited to read part two and three i think next time i go there I, and i'm in the like king's cross area i will get it then for oh we have another robin tally book our own private universe this book focuses on 15 year old akai who knows that she is bisexual but hasn't been able to kind of test that theory yet then when she sets off on a small group trip to a mexican town she meets krista who is also on a trip there Krista is a little bit older already has a boyfriend and kind of is a lot more experienced but they kind of hit it off and have this kind of I don't want to say like summer fling but this kind of relationship with them and it allows Akai to kind of explore herself and she realises that Krista's maybe not as confident and as well as kind of experienced as she originally thinks. I really really like this book I think it deals with some really important topics like I've like, it's rare that you read books that talk about like safe sex anyway but like especially same-sex couples that like they never talk about um but this really does do that and i think it was really really good and i think a book because obviously a client is a teenager i read this when i was a little bit younger um and i think it's really good that queer teenagers are exposed to that kind of thing and like the ways that they can protect themselves and stuff because it's rare that it's in books for heterosexual couples let alone like same-sex couples so I really love this book i think this book's really really good then for p we have the prom prom by Sandra Mitchell. This book is based on the musical of the same name which was on Broadway uh, last year and up till the start of this year I believe it has closed now and this book focuses on Emma. She lives in Indiana. It's a very kind of religious town where being anything but straight is very disagreed on. When she is outed everyone kind of knows and does not treat her well because of it and her parents kick her out and now she lives with her grandmother. There's a girlfriend Alyssa but Alyssa is very closeted and also very popular and does not kind of want to come out and her mum would definitely not agree with it but all they want to do is take each other to the prom but it is a couple's only prom you have to sign you can't get like an individual ticket and it has to be a um like man and a woman going to the prom so when emma puts down her name and a fake girl's name just so she can get two tickets to be able to take Alyssa, it kind of sets this massive thing in motion of that she's not allowed to do that and she's not allowed to take another girl to the prom and it kind of sets accidentally kind of sets off this whole movement i do really like this book there were a couple of bits which it felt like things happened like really really fast and i guess that that is the case because it is based on a show in which you have two hours to tell like a whole story so i guess those things do have to happen sometimes not them getting together they've been together like for a long time before the book starts and a couple of other things i was like okay that just seems like resolved really easily but other than that i did really like this story and it really spoke about some important things like how people tend to pick and choose what they say based in the bible and how like people will wear clothes that are forbidden in the bible and different things but then they'll pick and choose the things that they consider to be wrong and that's really interesting and it kind of really challenged that and really challenged the way that people see certain things and it made them think and that was really good and i think that this book was also really important then for q we have queen Wings of Geek by Jen Wilde. This is a book on my Christmas wish list that I really want to finally get to because I need to actually finally get to this book and read this book because I've heard nothing but good things about it. This book focuses on Charlie who is a vlogger and an actress. She's at a convention where she's kind of showing that she is absolutely fine from the breakup of her girlfriend and she's doing really really well. There she meets Alyssa who is kind of internet famous and she realizes that her crush on her might not necessarily be one side. It's kind of everything that involves from there and kind of that story i've heard nothing but good things about this book honestly like i've been meaning to get it for so long i don't know why i haven't but i've heard nothing but good things i'm absolutely buzzing to finally get it and be able to read it then for art we have red white and raw blue by casey mcquinston this book 
I'm in love with. This book is so good. It focuses on Alex, who is the first son. He is the son of the President of the United States, who is his mom, the first ever female president. And him and Prince Henry of Wales, the, you know, Prince of England and Buckingham Palace, have kind of got this like mini aminosity going on between them. No one ever really knows what kind of why um, but when at a royal wedding things go to a head and they both get in trouble for ruining the cake they have to pretend that they are BFFs and that it was all an accident however that BFF pretendingness turns into a real BFFness and then a romantic Ness. and I'm in love with this book I'm in love with Alex and Henry they are wonderful I was supposed to be like buddy reading this we ended up just being like we can't just read this like five chapters a day we have to just binge it which is what we did um, and it's absolutely wonderful and delightful and I cannot express enough how good this book is and you should all really read it then for S we have Sometime After Midnight by by Elle Phillips and this is a kind of Cinderella story or Cinderfella as it says on the front of this book, which I love. This focuses on Nate and Cameron who meet in a club one night and when they kind of separate, the only thing that kind of Cameron has is a picture that was taken of Nate's converse that have kind of been like coloured in and like designed and designed like by himself. And, but Nate has found out that Cameron is the son of this guy that owns his record company, which kind of screwed up his life and his dad's life and kind of doesn't want anything to do with him, but it's Cameron trying to find him and kind of their past and put their past behind them to kind of make this future. Uh, I really liked this book. I think the best way to describe it is just very really fun. But again, it explores like grief and that's really good and kind of how different things can have different impacts and the way that different people kind of remember different things and experience different things. And then it kind of focuses on like social media and his sister, Cameron's sister is like Instagram famous and stuff. And it's kind of like a very modern take on the story and I really, really liked it. For T we have Tell Me How You Really Feel by Amina May Safi. I love this book. It is like a good and enemies to lovers, not actual evil enemies to lovers, but like we don't think we like each other, but we really do enemies to lovers. It focuses on Sana who asked out Rachel, but it didn't go very well because Rachel just assumed that she was joking. So they've kind of not really had much of a relationship ever since. But then when Rachel has to cast her senior project and there's an accident which happens, which means that Sana has to take the role. It's kind of them working together and realizing that what happened was just like a massive miscommunication like, and kind of like learning to grow from that and live from that and get to know each other properly and I just really love this book I thought it was really good it's like described as an, like a love letter to Rory and Paris from Gilmore Girls and when you know that you can definitely see how that's incorporated and I love Gilmore Girls the older I've gotten the more I do not like Rory um <laughs> but you I, I still love the whole kind of like feel of Gilmore Girls and you can definitely see those similarities in this book I just want to go to Stars Hollow man then we have Unspeakable by Abby Rushton and this focuses on Megan who hasn't spoken in months and she just doesn't want to talk anymore. She's pushing away everyone that she cares about so that she doesn't let out what's in her head because she knows that she can't say what is happening and what's trying to burst out of her head and everything she's keeping inside. A new girl called Jasmine starts school and is kind of really happily and bub bubbly and Megan starts to think that kind of things seeming brighter and maybe it's because of Jasmine. Megan really wants to talk again, she really really wants to like find her voice and speak and be able to get some normalcy back but she's really scared that if she finds a way to talk and to get her voice back is she gonna ruin everything else by letting these secrets out. I really didn't know what to expect when I first read this book but I really really liked it. Abby Rushton's storytelling is really 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 good and I absolutely adore it and I think this book is a really interesting book as well and a really good exploration of lots of different things. For V we have The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman and this book focuses on Violet Saunders who's kind of uprooted from the city and is now living upstate New York and I really love upstate New York. I love that this is something which is set in upstate New York because I haven't really read much that is and it's a really lovely place. People kind of just assume that like New York is New York, like Manhattan, and that's it. It's not. Um, Manhattan is actually one of my least favorite parts of the state and city. I loved Upper East Side, but like Times Square and stuff, where everyone like wouldn't 
no anyway irrelevant um, but she goes up there and she is a kind of descendant on one of the founders of the town and she ends up meeting some other people who are also descendants of the founders of the town but kind of weird things have started to happen there's like bodies found in the woods like the townspeople start to become really really kind of like hostile and it's these teenagers trying to like figure out what's going on and where all of these things come from it's like Riverdale meets Stranger Things is how it was marketed and like made me really excited to read it I was sent this by Titan Books by the way I love this book there's a review of it on my blog which I will link down below then for W we have We Are The Ants by Sean David Hutchison and this book focuses on Henry who is dealing with lots of things his older brother he's just dropped out of college and he's got his girlfriend pregnant his mum is kind of dealing with bringing like kind of keeping the house together his grandmother is suffering from Alzheimer's and last year his boyfriend committed suicide well all of this is going on Henry is abducted by aliens and they kind of give him the power of here's this button and if you press it it will stop this big disaster which is going to hit the world and destroy the world essentially he's been given 144 days to make up his mind and he's really thinking like is the world worth being saved like what is going on but then he meets Diego who kind of like forces him to kind of think about his beliefs and think about the world and what's happening there's everything involved with, uh, involved in um, everything unfolding from there there we go that's how we use words and I really love this book I think this book's really interesting because it really makes you think like would I press the button it really makes you question lots of things that you wouldn't necessarily have thought about before like it really opens your mind to lots of things and makes you think about lots of things and I just love the way that Sean David Hutchison tells stories and this is absolutely amazing so you should read it okay cool. I don't know why I always feel the need to apologize as you can see I look slightly different because the end of this video didn't work for some reason so it's the next day I decided to wear the same jumper so that it didn't look too different but I don't have any makeup on because I wasn't planning on going anywhere today because it's a day off um, but I don't know why I feel like I always need to apologize with no makeup because that's just my face and I have spots and we all have spots and, like I don't know why as women I feel the need to apologize why if I was a man I wouldn't feel bad if I didn't but let's go so X is actually the first graphic novel of this A to Z list and this is Mooncake written by Suzanne Walker and Wendy Hsu that's where we're getting the X from for this and I have this book on my Christmas list wish wish wish, wish wish list and I am so so excited to read it it sounds like everything I love in one big graphic novel and I'm buzzing to finally get it this actually started off as a graphic novel online but it's now a graphic novel that you can buy and I'm so excited to get it this graphic novel is an own voices graphic novel and it follows Nova who knows loads about being a teen witch works in her grandmother's shop she then meets Tam someone that she had a crush on and Tam is non-binary and goes by they and them and it's kind of them discovering each other and themselves and that story and it's just like queer witchy magical story which is just everything I love and the main characters are Chinese American like I said it's own voices and honestly I am absolutely buzzing to finally get my hands on this graphic novel I need more queer graphic novels in my life so please send me your recommendations down below and for why we have You Know Me Well by David Lalathan and Nina Lacour this was another book which no one told me was gay this focuses on Mark and Kate who have spent their whole kind of year sat next to each other but hasn't spoken until their worlds kind of collide and the things that they're dealing with kind of come to light and they sort of support each other with that Kate is running away from the chance to be with a girl that she's had a crush on forever and Mark is in love with his best friend Ryan who he doesn't think loves him back they're both kind of really struggling with these things and dealing with these things and finding each other is not something which they expect but they do and it's everything that comes from there I really love this book again no one told me like about it I just like they were like you should read this and then I really love Nina Lacour and then I read the back and I was like oh okay there are queer characters in this why do people not talk about this stuff then for Zed we have Czech please Ngozi 
Yukazu, that's my Z. See, lots of other people do this one, and it was actually this video where I found out about this graphic novel, but safe to say it goes against it is like everything again that I love and this one focuses on Eric who is a vlogger and figure skater turned a college ice hockey player and he is kind of dealing with himself and college and being gay and it's everything from there I again I'm so excited to read this it's on my Christmas wish list I um, like, like I said, it sounds like everything I love. Um, I've heard nothing but good things about it, so I really, really wanted to recommend it for this video. Okay, so that was my A to Z of Queer Lit. I hope that you guys liked this video. Of course, I would love to have recommendations in the comments. Please, please do that. Like I said, I'm, I am I need more queer graphic novels. But I'm gonna go now because my battery is flashing at me. Um, so I'm gonna love you and leave you. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Like I said, if you're new here, then I make videos about books and fun of me things. So if you wanna stick around and join us then you can hit that subscribe button and as usual all the links to all my other social medias are in the description down below thank you guys for watching i hope you're doing really 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 well and i will see you next time goodbye